welcome back. I'm going to bring you details on what's come in on the phones in just a moment. First, though, let's have a quick reminder of our appeal on that brutal attack on 52-year-old Adam Nichols at an industrial estate in Essex. It happened back in January. I don't know where his strength come from. Tried to run. I just remember this blue light, a vivid, vivid blue light. And he said, where are the keys? Give us the keys or I will effing kill you. And I remember just going, oh, I have children, I have children, please do not kill me. And that's when they started taping my face up. I just, they're not going to stop. And I remember laying under the van for about five minutes, which was the most scary, you know, it was the scariest time for me. And then I just made a conscious decision that, Adam, you've got to get from under here. My eye had been pushed back into my face and dropped. The socket that my eye sits in was totally shattered, and my eye was only being held on in my face by the muscles. Truly shocking. Well, DS Natalia Ross is uh, leading her team tonight. Uh, how have the calls been for you? We've had lots of calls. We're still keen to hear from more, particularly about the car that was seen in CCTV. Yeah, let's just take a look, Natalia, at that CCTV that we showed earlier tonight. Uh, the when and the where, what's important here? Here it is. It's on the 28th of January 2015, around 7 to 8 p.m. at night. It's at the Eventon Industrial Estate in Perfleet. Let's just take a little look at the map of the location of that. I mean, you know, people will be familiar with it in that area. It's a big place, a lot going on. It's a large industrial estate. It's very close to the M25. It's used regularly by lorry drivers parking up to rest. Um, we heard Adam just talk briefly about his injuries. Just give us a little bit more detail on that because they're absolutely sickening. Yet they're life-changing injuries. He's lost sight in his one eye. He's got broken bones. He's got numbness in part of his face. And just to remind people, these attackers used, there was a pepper spray and also a, a, a taser type uh, stun gun was used as yes, well. Yes, that's right. Okay, well, thanks for now. Um, we would appeal for any more calls with people who have information. Right now, let's go to Martin. We've had some really good calls coming in tonight. Let's start with the CCTV we showed you and that robbery in Monton, uh, Greater Manchester Police after information. Remember, this was this sudden brutal attack when one of the suspects potentially had a machete concealed within a sock. We've had some good calls on this. Officers are chasing potential leads as we speak. The robbery in Crouch Hill, again, one of the suspects potentially had a firearm. Cash and watch were taken from one of the suspects. Lots of calls coming in on this, a new line of inquiry. And that assault in a kebab shop in Purley, we have a possible name for the suspect. Please do keep those calls coming in. They are so important. Next, a reminder of the breakthrough in the cold case murder of Julie Pacey. The 38-year-old mother of two was killed at her home in Grantham in 1994. It's been 21 years since Julie was murdered. We've never identified a motive. Julie lived for her family, she lived for her friends. There's absolutely no reason as to why she was attacked. We knew that the forensic possibilities were there, but I can't really believe that that profile is still there after all this length of time. Ever since the, the first day, I've always had hope that they would find somebody. The full DNA profile that they've got can rule out a lot of people. They know who it's not. They've just got to find who it is. They only need one phone call. That's all they need. Just one call. Well, DI Helen Evans from Lincolnshire Police is here once more. Did we get that one phone call that the family is hoping for? We've had an absolutely overwhelming number of calls this evening. It's quite remarkable after such a long period of time that people can still ring with information. <laughs> And even though you have had a lot of calls in, you'd like more people to get in touch about this man with the ruddy complexion in a blue boiler suit. Tell us more about him. Yes, that's right. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he was seen twice on the Friday and then um, shortly after Julie's murder, a similarly described man. Um, we still haven't had a definite name as to who he is. Um, and if he was at the address genuinely on the Friday, then please contact us and let us know who you are. I can eliminate you from the investigation. And that's the thing about a DNA breakthrough. You can eliminate people as well as connect people. Thank you so much for the update. Do you know who that man in the blue boiler suit is? Do you know what happened to Julie? Do not hesitate to get in touch. The family has been waiting 21 years for justice to be served. Martin. 
Well, we had good calls on the CCTV, good calls on the wanted faces as well. Krzysztof Zalewski, he was the first face we showed you, failed to attend trial on the five counts of sexual activity with a 13-year-old child. Had some very, very interesting calls on that. Detectives following those up as we speak. Michael Ifeini, he's broken the conditions of his bail. Good calls, police describing this as of great interest. And Christian Siwak, he's wanted on human trafficking offences. Promising calls on this one, potential new leads as well. So really encouraging calls. Please keep them coming in. OK, that's all uh, we have for you tonight. But please do take another look at all appeals on the Crime Watch website. The wanted faces, the CCTV, they're also on the red button until midnight. And of course, you can keep up to date with how the case has progressed by following at BBC Crime Watch. Thank you so much for all of your calls tonight. They make an enormous difference. For now, from everyone here, do have a very good evening. Bye bye.